Hi guys, how we doing? So, as the title says, I've got a track day booked. I'm gonna be taking the CBR. Um, there is a few things you need to do for a track day now. You need uh, a brake guard. As of June, January 2021 this year, you need a brake guard to get on No Limits and MSV track days, I believe. I'm not too sure who else does track days. This is my first one, so I'm all new to this. Um, but you now need a brake guard. Um, so we'll go over to the bike. I'll show you what's been done and how I've done it. Right, guys. So this is the CBR in track, guys. Um, as you can see, there is a brake guard. Um, we'll go over that in a minute and what that does and why you need it. Um, I've also done, you can just about see in there, some braided cables. Um, I've changed, obviously I've changed the fluid and I've put some racing pads in there. I've made some blanks for the mirrors, uh, so they're gone. And the centre stand is removed because I don't need a centre stand for a track day. Um, so I'm going to go over to the bench and I'll show you all the bits and pieces I had before I fitted them. Um, just go over what I've got what it's for, why you need it, um, and then we'll fit the bits, and that'll be that. Right guys, so this is the uh, the selection of parts I've got uh, to fit today. So, as I said, pads. These are a, uh, a road racing track day pad. Um, your, your standard pads will suffice for a track, but there's a, a, a chance that they can glaze up, you can lose a bit of feel with them. These will feel exactly the same the whole whole session. So it's it's just a little bit more confidence in the brakes. Um, as I said, there's the, the braided lines. Um, they're just a, a replacement. And this, this is the race setup. So from the master cylinder, you have two lines going down to each caliper. Um, whereas on the standard setup, it comes down, then branches off. Um, and there's a there's a school of thought that for every connection you have, you lose a little bit of braking power. So these, it's it's called a racing setup. We're going racing. Um, and then this is the uh, the brake guard. This literally replaces your your bar end weight. Um, and as as, as you imagine. Uh, if that's your handlebar there, your brake lever is just guarded at the end. So if anyone hits the front of your bike, um, it's not going to hit your brake and you're going to low side or you know go over the handlebars. Um, as I say, these are now a, a legal requirement for track days. Um, you can buy these in lots of little uh, different styles. Um, sometimes the Chinese ones, they come as pairs, so you have... Um, a brake lever and a clutch lever. You you don't need a clutch lever. That's it's it's pointless. It's at it's you just adding weight. You're just adding complexity. You're adding something else to go wrong. So you only need a brake lever. Um, and also this is the brake fluid. Now as it says here, it's racing quality. It doesn't mean it's racing brake fluid. Um, it probably does exactly the same as every other braking uh, brake fluid. So yeah. New brake fluid is always a good idea when you're doing anything with your brakes. No, never put in the old fluid, that'd be crazy. So let's have a look at the bike. Now, obviously we've got to remove the bar end weight uh, for the, the, the brake guard to go on. But at the moment, the, the brake lever comes back quite far and it gets spongy. Like there's, there's quite a lot of like flex in it. Um, Normally, sort of like I, I only use maybe one, maybe two fingers uh, when I'm out on the road. Um, but obviously, if I'm going to be grabbing a fistful of brake, um, I want I want this thing to work as 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 good as it possibly can. So let's have a look at this brake guard because I'm curious to to whether I'm actually going to have enough room on the end here. So I'm going to set the camera up and we'll we'll take this off and we'll see what the brake guard looks like. All right, so let's take this off. It's just an Allen key. Now, on the Hondas, they have... I'm not too sure if all bikes are like this. These are aftermarket ones. They came with the bike. I'm not a massive fan of them, but trying to find an original set is, uh, is quite difficult. On Hondas, they have... Um, it's like a, a chamfered edge. I'll put a picture on the screen, but... My my concern is that it won't actually fit without fouling the 
um, the, the throttle tube. So that's the idea, but as you can see, I'm just pushing this on there and that moves the whole thing. Now, that's not going to be any good. You're going to be going down the road and the uh, you, you, your brake guards are going all over the place. So we've got to space this out. Um, whether I do that with some washers or a bolt, um, I'm not too sure at the moment. Um, you can, they obviously supply these and you can pull these out, but they don't come out easily. It's quite a fight. And as I say, this thing's 25 years old, so that's definitely going to put up a fight. As you can see on the original one, there's um, this this end that obviously fits in so that there's, it doesn't bind up on anything. Right, guys, I got this fitted. Um, I ended up using a, a couple of big M8 washers um, just to get the space in. And it's, it's close, and it kind of... If you're really pulling it over, it kind of rubs, but it's still, it's still springing back. So, as I say, this is, this is so that if you have an impact of some description, you're not going to get your brake lever pressed in. Um, doesn't look pretty, um, but it's functional. It's there for a reason. So that's now on. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start draining the brake fluid. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, obviously I'm going to take the, the top off um, and I'm just going to use a syringe just to, to draw out um, what's in here before I open up the bleed valves on the calipers. So yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on with uh, draining the brake fluid. So this is another reason for doing this. If you uh, you see in there, that's um, that's actually like just dirt and stuff in the bottom. It's not it's not completely clean in there. And if you can know where we can see that, but this bit here, that's just just a load of dirt. I'm going to get a pick and see if I can actually pull that stuff out. So yeah, you can actually see there's like sediment in the bottom of this. So this is why you need to service your brakes because you don't want this stuff in your brake lines. And there's some more over here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to start cleaning this out, uh, and then we'll go down to the um, the calipers and, uh, and drain the rest of the fluid out. Right, so after a lot of faffing, I managed to get the old hoses out. Um, there is a, a clamp that lives up on the um, clamp, a little like bracket that lives up on the bottom of the um, the, the the bottom triple clamp. Um, so that was just held in with a little um, M8. Um, yeah. So this is obviously the old one. And I've got the new ones here. We'll go with this. Um, I'll get this out of the packet and we'll chuck it on the bike.
right, so the new brake lines are on. Um, I'm not too happy with the way these are rooted at the moment. They're kind of, uh, if you can see out there, they're kind of cable tied to uh, one of the old brackets. And on the side, originally there was a uh, little metal tab that came off and held it. It it only held the metal brake line and it would have held it kind of uh, at an angle that would have been unfavorable. So I might make some little metal tabs just to come off, just so I can actually cable tie that away from everything because I don't really want it rubbing. Um, but they're in, they're all nice and tight. So the next thing to do now is actually fill this up with brake fluid. And the only issue with doing that at the moment is, as you can see, it's, it's, it's on an angle, but if, if you try to pour brake fluid in, you're gonna kind of, this is in the way. So if you pull it over this way, it's on even more of an angle, so the brake fluid is just gonna come out the side. So ideally, what you wanna do is fill it up from there, but then obviously the screen's in the way. So I'm going to take the screen out and I want to take the mirrors off anyway because track day I don't want mirrors. So these again they're quite easy to take out there's two 10 mil bolts and they just come off so I'm going to do that I'm going to take the screen out and we'll come back to this in a second. Right so screen is off now I have good access to this um, it's going to be nice and easy to keep filling up I'm not going to have to worry about getting um, brake fluid on the screen because those plastic screens mark very, very easily. So it's just best for this to be off. But obviously we've got the clocks down here. Now I'm going to put a rag across the top of these just in case I do spill anything. It's It's got a better fighting chance. So yeah, I'm going to put some brake fluid in here. Uh, and then the idea is to gently um, squeeze the lever so that we can get some of the air out. And then we get on to bleeding the brakes. way longer than I wanted it to. Um, I probably end up bleeding the brakes for probably two hours and then probably another 20 minutes. Like this is the next day, like I left this overnight. Um, I did sort of like two hours worth of bleeding, left it overnight, came back to it today and I've done another 20 minutes. Um, and this lever is, it, it, it feels a lot more solid as you've, I've, I've just adjusted this, this was, further out I've just adjusted it for my hand for my preferred grip um but like you start to feel tension straight off and then there's only a, a little bit before you actually get like full lock up so I mean that is probably going to be your range of motion for for braking you're not going to want to put any more on that um but yeah I'm, I'm really happy with uh with these lines um they're they're in but yeah so Next thing to do with this is to change out the pads. Um, so let's do that.
So everything is back together now. Um, once I had um, done the brakes, I put the screen back on um, because I took it out for a test ride, um, just to ensure that, that brake was working properly. Um, since then, um, I changed the coolant. Um, I've checked the oils. Um, I've gone over the tyres. The tyres are nail free. Um, all the brakes are good. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any loose nuts and bolts that I can see on it. So I think this is pretty much good to go. Um, I need to take it to the petrol station and brim the tank. Um, just so I've got enough fuel for the day. I've got a couple of jerry cans I'm going to take as well. So this will get loaded up the day before uh, the track day uh, into a friend's van. Um, he's coming with me. He's bringing a CBR 600 RR. Um, I'm not sure if he's riding or not, um, but he's bringing a bike anyway. So I might have a go on that. You never know. Um, but yeah, that'll be that. Um, I've got uh, another friend that's coming with me who's bringing a very special bike. I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing. I've not seen it yet. Um, he only bought it uh, a couple of months ago. It's from, from what I've heard and the pictures I've seen, this thing is impressive. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in the next video. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll leave this one here. Um, I hope you like this one, guys. Um, I will see you the next time you see this bike. We will be at the track. Please give this video a like. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.